Sue Kedgley. Thank you, Mr Chair. Well, Mr Chair, um, what... I'd just like to pick up on the theme I made, uh, I was discussing yesterday, which is actually what we are overseeing uh, with this bill today is not uh, local government in Auckland, it is actually state government. What, so what we're actually seeing is the elimination of local government, instead of which we have a form of state government. Now, the Minister is, uh, uh, being, is responding to various questions, so he might like to respond to this. How can you call it local government when you have 1.3 million, a third of the population of New Zealand, in this local council, represented by 20 councillors? Now, we have, I've just got the library to check, we, there are 38 members of parliament representing Auckland, the, one point, the third of the New Zealand population, but only 20, only 20 councillors are going to represent Auckland. They are going to have constituencies which are larger than the constituencies of members of parliament. They're going to have 70, 80,000 or more people to represent. This is cannot, there cannot be any pretense that this is local grassroots democracy, that this is a local council. It simply is not. It is a form of state government. So what the, what the government has done, having, well it's, well, it's been very successful, it's got rid of the regional council, it's got rid of seven councils, and now it's replaced it by this form of state government. But then to try to give a fig leaf uh, to the idea that there is some sort of local input, uh, they have come up with these community boards. Now, contrary to what the minister said, that they are incorporated in statute, they're not actually incorporated in statute. It specifically says in the legislation that they're not local bodies, they're unincorporated societies, nor do they have any uh, clear delegated powers, despite all the talk, etc. And they have memberships of four to seven people. They're just pitiful little, uh, little, as someone said, like knitting groups or like residence associations, and they are pretending to be local democracy in action. What a joke. Now, just turning to these, I mean, it is good that the uh, member has, uh, that the minister has accepted the amendment by George Hawkins about saying that two meetings of a CCO of a, a council-owned company would be open per year. But you know what? That's all that will, that's all that will be open to the public each year. This will become the de facto that all of the meetings will be in secret, except for two that will be open each year. Now, these boards, they will always be able to use there's something commercial in confidence to exclude the public, and twice a year, the people of Auckland will come in, they'll have a little bit of a say, and then these unelected and unaccountable directors appointed by the Minister of Local Government, appointed by central government, they will go back to deliberating in secret uh, behind closed doors with this uh, little tokenistic uh, a couple of times a year uh, having their uh, boards uh, meetings open. The other thing I think that is still extraordinary is that this is the Minister of Regulatory Reform who goes on about we must be spending our money wisely. We still have never been told what are the estimated costs, or what are the estimated savings of this huge reorganisation. We're starting to sort of work out rather um, slowly that it's going to be well in excess of $200 million. But what are the, no, but what we want to know is what are the costs also borne by the councils of Auckland, not just the direct costs borne by uh, government. And what are the projected savings? The minister has been very, very silent about the projected savings. One thing he's been very clever about, all of the money is going to be picked up by the Auckland ratepayers, but wait, not till after the next national election. So it won't be until November of next year. So ratepayers won't be saddled with the bill, the huge expensive bill, to pay for the costs of this extraordinary reorganisation which Aucklanders don't want. The nasty bill, uh, which will, will, they'll be picking up the bill, won't be carefully until uh, next year um, after the uh, local body elections. But when the bill comes, I can tell you, 
Aucklanders are going to be very sour. The other thing I'd like the Minister, since he's um, responding to questions, is can he guarantee that there will be no disruption in services uh, once the uh, Auckland Council is set up next year?